everyone, welcome to another interview on Hungry People. Today, I have my friend with me, Jillian Barry, all the way from what part of Canada are you from? <laughs> Toronto, Canada. AJ, hey, AJ, what's up? All the way from Toronto, Canada. Uh, nothing all much. the way. Six hours away from where you are. <laughs> no. That's not that far, actually. It's I not. It I think I'm about six or seven hours from you. Oh, wow. That's not far at all. I should probably do a visit up. I don't know if the restrictions apply to me like they do to you. You know what? I, no, actually, they don't. I believe you can come in and you can come here and then go home. Fine. But it's just if I want to leave. You're allowed. Yeah. Oh, so you're trapped. I'd be fine. I'm trapped pretty much. <laughs> so, uh What's really cool about Instagram and social media is the fact that, you know, everyone only craps on it and everyone only, uh, you know, gets a lot of stress from it. And I'm definitely one of those people half the time. I just want to delete it, turn it off. I've, pro I've probably done it twice this week where I'm like, all right, I'm done with Instagram for a while. <laughs> but one of the really good things and that your guys are going to see on this podcast and this YouTube channel is that every once in a while you get to meet someone who you really click with and who's really special to you. And the podcast was started with uh, Michael Patrick and I, and both of us had met through the podcast. I mean, <laughs> had met through Instagram. <laughs> and, you know, we have hung out multiple times. We just came back from the Woodstock Crew Festival. We're starting this business together. We're getting into sponsorships and we talk every single day and we're best friends. And we met through Instagram. And that's one of the beautiful things about the platform. People you would have never met people with similar values and interests and hobbies and struggles. And Jillian, I want to say that you are the other person on Instagram that has really brought more value into my life. And I, and I, I get so much out of our friendship and I learn so much. And I just feel as though my life is only enhanced as a result of us chatting. And even though it's through only through social media, uh, what an amazing thing. And I want to thank, I want to thank you for just being so humble and kind to me because it's been, it's been, you know, worth so much. No, they, I feel the exact same way as you do about that. I'm so grateful for you. And I'm, I don't know how we met on there, but I'm so happy we did. I appreciate your friendship. I love you. And it's just so nice to always have your support, especially being a raw vegan. There's not too many raw vegans out there. And I just, it's nice to be able to talk to you about certain things and have that support yeah and i really respect you and i love what you're doing i love your new podcast and i think it's amazing thank you and i'm yeah. glad you brought that up because you know whether i was whether i'm eating raw or not what people seem to lack on all fronts is compassion and empathy for the people on the other side so you know if if someone's eating a raw diet or a, or a meat-based diet or a vegan diet you know people usually can be hostile or hold it against them or or mm -hmm. be belittling and it's mm -hmm. like it's the last thing you want in the world you're just who like whoever you are you know if i'm eating a raw vegan diet i don't want to hear how crappy it is and how terrible it is it's like um i agree could, with you. Or, or hearing about the flaws of it it's like we can have a discussion but there's a certain energy to being belittled you know yeah and i feel as though that's why there's a certain amount of people that I really vibe with and you being one of them, because we just mm -hmm. have a mutual respect, you know, we're adults mm -hmm. and, you know, everyone has different pasts and journeys and all that kind of thing. So I think that's one of the reasons we get along really well is because we have the respect for each other. Me too. And you know what? I'm supportive of people, no matter what their diet is. Most of my friends here in Toronto aren't even vegan. And I think even you see some raw vegans or vegan go back to not having that type of lifestyle, not being vegan anymore. And I just think there needs to be more compassion for those types of people. I think you see so much hate for those types of people. If they go back, I love being a raw vegan. And I mean, I think everybody's on their own journey and their own stage and no matter what they're doing, it's just, they're doing them. Right. And it's just, I think there's too much hate out there for people and their diets. And especially I think in the vegan world, it's like, isn't it kind of a diet about having compassion and stuff like that? You know what I mean? I don't like when I see people get hated on because they go back to the other side and I am a raw vegan and I don't see myself changing from that. I just, I don't know. Yeah. People, people do not have the capacity and empathy to hold space and hear what actually is going on with the other person. You know, mm -hmm. you don't, you have no clue what they're going through. You don't, how could you? Mm -hmm. And I remember that uh, Elise, Parker is mm -hmm. Elise, Elise she, Parker. Yeah, she stopped being vegan. 
and everyone was like talking a lot of crap about her. And a good friend of mine, Benny at the festival, uh, he was, he's from Australia. He was like, did anyone ask her like, it, how is she doing? Is she okay? It, you know, she must've, you know, she, she wasn't excited about having to go back to meet. She just didn't mm-hmm. know how to make it work anymore. Mm-hmm. And, I feel and she's as though, on her own journey. You know what I mean? It's like, she's on her own path and the hate she's dealt with. Like, I, I think even now she still deals with a lot of people are like coming at her and I kind of feel bad for her. Yeah. And Christina as well, like Christina is still vegan, but people just hate on her like mm-hmm. unbelievably. Like, mm-hmm. It's, it's kind of, it's pretty sad because it just mm-hmm. shows the colors of the people. And I feel as though, you know, you have someone who's vegan and then other people who are raw vegan, they're going to be getting a similar energy because it's almost like, you know, oh, you're never going to do it. It's the most expensive diet in the world. You know, there's a lot of kickback when you do certain things, you know, you're not going to be able to be social. So mm-hmm. it can be hard. And I think that you and I are going to talk a little bit more on this subject in the, in the future, because mm-hmm. kind of social navigating this type of eating could be very challenging and difficult. Mm-hmm, and we want to, and we want to discuss uh, our personal challenges, but also maybe some solutions with that. Exactly. I look forward to that. So real quick, I just want, we are sponsored by Supercells. I, we're not only sponsored, I also work for the company. So I'm going to put a link down below for people interested in trying what is known as molecular hydrogen. This stuff is amazing for inflammation, sleep, energy, being able to neutralize free radicals and hydrate and have a better cell penetration of hydration. Um, with super cells, you can order uh, through the link below and that is great. But also I am the distributor in the United States. So if you want it quicker, maybe a little more um, cheaper on the shipping, feel free to leave a message or add me on Instagram or find me on WhatsApp. And I can send that out to you. You'll get it right away. But I do want to make everyone aware that Selena, the owner of the company, she has a stock of raspberry hydrogen that she's actually giving away for free. And if you go on her Instagram, I'll post it down below you can go to the link and she will give you a whole 30 day, 30 day bottle for free so that you can try it to see if you actually see a difference. Personally, as soon as I started seeing it, as soon as I started taking it, my sleep was just improved so much and so much less inflammation. And I know that because it's a magnesium based tablet, I could just feel my body just being able to calm down and relax. And the electrolytes that come from that and the hydration that comes from that it's been life-changing for me and I just stand behind them. I used the products for nine months before I ever reached out and wanted to work for them. So I already believed in, in the, in the message, in the product and everything. So feel free to go down below, check it out, or just read some of the testimonials and information on the site. Really amazing stuff. We live in a time because Jillian and I are both all for fruits and vegetables and healthy eating and good habits, but we live in a time where we actually have an advantage you know, a lot of people like to complain, oh, we live in 2021. There's so much pollution. There's so much social media and stress and Wi-Fi and all these things. But we also live in a time where there's so many solutions to so many of the problems that 100 years ago, people did not have. You know, people didn't have this information. They didn't have the ability to have uh, herbs, the, the type, well, they had herbs, but the types of herbs and the types of info on herbs and, you know, microbiome tests and, you know, physicians that actually know what they're talking about and being able to prevent deficiencies and disease and all of these things. So really feel grateful for the fact that we have these tools and we can use them and not just be stuck with fruit, vegetable. It's not really working. I go back to, you know, X, Y, Z. No, you have a plethora of tools. Of course, you got to listen to yourself, but you also got to, you know, learn a little bit and do some trial and error. And one of these, and these types of things are of the highest quality. You know, I'm not going to Walmart and buying Pepto-Bismol, you know, and I'm and just so I can eat my cheesy puffs. It's like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> do your due diligence, find out. But I stand behind these things 100%. So cool. We're going to switch now, switch gears a little bit. Jillian, I would love to learn just a little bit more about you. So if you wanted to go into kind of like your upbringing, what you okay. went through your childhood a little bit, maybe yeah. some diet or some, you know, uh, sh- stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. So I grew up in the country. I had a single mom. I was an only child and, um, I don't know. I was an independent kid. Um, my diet, it was, I mean, every night I feel like we had meat and potatoes. My mom did have a garden, so I did have 
some greens and salad with like the good old craft dressing every night, but it was definitely, I'd eat McDonald's. I mean, nachos after school, peanut butter sandwiches, tuna sandwiches. It was, you know, I went to school, learned about the food groups, thought that was what I was supposed to eat. Right. So, um, I had a lot of anxiety, I think as a kid too, like a lot. And I had like some skin problems and, um, just a lot of anxiety. And I didn't, I had, obviously I didn't connect it with my diet at all until later on, until I was in my twenties or thirties. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It was a packaged food, like Joe, Lu- Joe Louis, all that kind of stuff. Right. I grew up in the eighties. I was born in 82. So it was a lot of, a lot of junk. I used to sneak into the jar and just eat huge spoonfuls of sugar. Uh, really? it, wasn't, it wasn't the healthiest, uh, it wasn't the healthiest childhood. That's for sure. You, you were carving up on just straight sugar. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So I've never heard that before. Yeah. I remember, I remember too, when no one was around, I used to get big. Well, can, can we, can we stop right there? I want to hear a little more about the anxiety. You know, anxiety is probably the number one thing that I've dealt with. That's led to a lot of issues and even decisions that I've made in my life. So I would love for you to dive a little more into the the anxiety that you had as a, as a kid, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what did it feel like? How long did it last? Did you notice that it would happen at certain times or around certain people? Did it Mm -hmm. impact any decision decisions that you were making? And how old were you? Were you like five or were you like 12? Um, probably from as old as I can remember, really. Wow. I think when I was really young, so I wasn't breastfed and I was uh, bottle fed like cow's milk. And I think I used to drink a lot until I got to an age where I thought this is disgusting. I don't want to eat any dairy uh, when I was younger too, but I ate, drank a lot. And then probably with the spoonfuls and sugar and stuff like that for the first few years, I think I was pretty overweight. And I think, I think people used to make fun of me. I don't remember that. I just remember my half sibling, my step sibling telling me that. But I don't know if that was part of it, but it's, I know for me specifically, like a lot of it is the food. Cause when I switched my diet, when I got older, like being, especially when I removed the gluten and stuff and when I really worked on healing my gut, the anxiety like is next to none now, but no, yeah, wow. it was, I mean, it was a lot when I was a kid. Like if I had to stand up and do a presentation at school or something like in high school, even, I, I mean, I was not eating good. And again, for me, a lot of it is diet. And my nerves, like, I don't know, my blood sugars, everything was a mess. If I would stand up to do a presentation in high school, like I fainted, literally, like oh, it happened wow. twice and it was so embarrassing, right? It was just so embarrassing because <laughs> I was just so nervous, right? I'm not like that now, but yeah, my anxiety was really bad as a kid. And, and I mean, looking back, I wish my life, I look back and I think my whole life would be so different had I known like how to feed my gut, have more balance, eat cleaner, right? Even if I wasn't eating perfectly, even if you're not eating perfectly, just to add in more plant foods to mm-hmm. feed your gut microbiome and have that balance. And it just affects your your brain and your whole body as a whole. Yeah. And did you notice like your heart would be racing? Did you notice? Yeah. Cold, so I would you know, be sweating a lot. Feet? Okay. Yeah. yeah I was sweating a lot, even as a teenager, like I would sweat so much under my arms. And then I, I remember like a doctor suggested, why don't you get Botox under your arms? So like I was even doing that, I would get Botox injections what? under my arms because it's a, it's a treatment for hyperhidrosis. They would call it. Right. What? The but really, heck? I just was like, feeding my body all these wrong things, not in alignment with myself and just dealing with so much anxiety and sweating. And I mean, that's pretty much gone now that I'm, now that I eat how I eat and live the life that I live. <laughs> You've never heard of that. Yeah. A lot of people I'm do stunned. That. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I would never do that now. And sometimes well, I wonder what even is in Botox, like nothing against people that do it. I support everybody do what you want to do. Right. I'm not judging at all, but uh, I don't even know what's in it. Right. It's just weird. I used to inject it under there, but I don't know. Yeah, no, I, I'm not judging it at all. I'm just blown away. So you go to a doctor and you're saying that because, you know, maybe you feel nervous or you're just sweating a lot. You're just saying like you're perspiring and he decides yeah. to how old, how old were you? Because I would sweat a lot under my arms. It would be mm-hmm. like huge, like huge amounts. I forget how old I was when I first did it. Probably I was a teenager then, or at least like close to 20 or something mm-hmm. like that. I was older. I wasn't like a young kid when I did that. Got you. But, um, I assumed then that you had tried like the stronger antiperspirants and stuff. Yeah, nothing worked. And it wasn't my, working. Okay. My anxiety was just high. And like I said, when I, and I mean, I'm not saying I don't sweat now. Like I do a little bit sometimes and stuff like that, but it was excessive. And a lot like, of it yeah, was because yeah, my anxiety. I got you. It's just, but, yeah. it's just, wow. Like, you know, I'm not a doctor at all, but I'm curious as how, 
how far they kind of dug into the way you were living to yeah. try to mediate that and turning to Botox. I was just like, what? The I've never heard of anything like that. <laughs> I don't know if you listened to my interview with uh, Raw Mara, Raw by Mara, yeah. but she was saying that she had like skin problems and acne and they were giving her um, like a chemo cream drug, like some kind of cancer, skin cancer for her acne, like skin cancer treatment for her wow. acne. And it's just, I'm just blown away. You know what? I had acne too. When I was a teenager, I had it really bad on my back. And again, I, again, I had it all over my body, but again, it went away when I cleaned up my diet. So I had it really bad on my back and I didn't know how to fix it. And I would sometimes get it on my face, but not so much, but the doctor prescribed birth control. So that's when I went on birth control when I was 13 or 14 for my skin. So they said it would, they said my skin was like that from a hormone imbalance. So they put me on birth control to clear it up. Did it help? Yeah, it actually did help, but I would never, but I mean, the diet was the answer for me. Right. But I would right. never, I'm not on the pill now. I don't believe in it now. It just totally throws off your rhythm. You don't ovulate. I don't think it's natural. Yeah. I'm not for the pill at all either, but I've heard so many, the reason why I asked if it works is so many women take it for that reason and it doesn't mm -hmm. help and it doesn't mm -hmm. help their skin. It did help with me. It, yeah, but, I remember, Excuse me. but it still messes with their hormones. So it's like the worst of both, mm -hmm. <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. It, ama it just really, really amazes me the the fact that they just stay on the surface level. So many professionals, so many physicians, you know, I go to a GI doctor, I've been constipated 10 days. Mm -hmm. I don't know why they sent you to me like these, no, no questions, no, like, all right, well, tell me about what you have going on. Tell mm -hmm. me about how you feel, you know, in further investigation mm -hmm. and, you know, not to get sound like some kind of conspiracy guy, but you know, physicians are paid per patient and per prescription. So mm -hmm. they want you in and out as fast as just like fast food. They want you in and out because the more patients they can see, the more money. Mm -hmm. And it's an issue because the physicians that are that I recommend and that are good sit down with you and walk you through what you have going on and walk you through what the solution is and ask you, you know, leaving, are you comfortable with and they actually make you feel like you've been heard, like you're a human being. Absolutely. And not just like, okay, like, cut your, you know, I'll see you in a month. Absolutely. It infuriates me because so many people are alone and they're scared and they're like, I want help, but the help they get sucks. It, yeah. It's horrible. And a lot of times they're worse off. And so many people, they just trust whatever the doctor says, which is what I used to do, right? They just trust whatever the doctor says. And then, and then that's it, right? I mean, yeah. And I feel as though in, in the, you know, healing world, there's a lot of mistakes made by people because they're doing everything natural and they don't trust doctors and they put themselves in shitty positions. Mm -hmm. And I, I agree. completely get that. I, I completely get that. But I don't know how you can blame these people a lot of the time when all the help that they've ever gotten has just made them worse. And mm -hmm. it's like they just want to actually feel better. And people are gaslighting on, on all ends. It's, it's infuriating. That's why one of the reasons why you know, I sp specifically seek out good physicians, good dentists, good psychologists. So I know that I have the support that I need. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we had talked a little bit about uh, Dr. Doug Lyle and just mm -hmm. how in vitally important it's been for me to have someone who doesn't, it's not just talk therapy. It's actually, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people think you go to the, you go to the therapist, you talk about your problems and then, you know, that's what it's for. No, that's terrible. You know, you, what you want, just like if you go to the mechanic with a broken car, you want it fixed so you can go drive it home. Mm -hmm. And I feel as though we go to the doctor, we go to the psychologist, and we do this little roundabout thing where nothing ever gets improved. You know, I want to yeah. go to the psychologist with a problem and have a new perspective or have a strategy or an outlook so that I'm actually freed from the burden or I have a fighting chance to actually take the steps to remove myself out of these you know, these tough spots and same thing with a the doctor. There's, mm -hmm. you know, Oh, you know, we're going to try this for a while. I don't want to try. I want to fix it. I don't no, want to try they need, things. Yeah. I feel like they need to look at what's causing things, you know, rather than what's the, what's just, what's the solution. What's the band aid? What, how can we stop this? Like rather see what the cause is, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and there needs to be like a multi-level to it, not just some kind of surface level type of thing. I mean, it's part of the issue. I went to Hippocrates and I felt like I didn't pay a dime. Brian Clement saw me, talked with me. I felt like in that moment, in that 20 minutes, I got so much 
he had sh- had shown so much more interest in my overall well being than I had ever gotten from any physician. Incredible. That and that's why I have be, a lot of yeah. respect for him. Absolutely, that but would be to awesome make, to go there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not to make this all about me. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so I want to dive back into you, Jillian. Um, no, you're interesting, AJ. <laughs> thanks. So you're you're teenager. You're feeling yeah. all of that anxiety. I completely relate to that. One of the first things that I noticed was my armpits just being like soaked because I didn't mm-hmm. even want to raise my hand because I Me was too. so, uh, you know, perspiring, just so nervous. I didn't have any yeah. like, I didn't have any like pain or anything, but my anxiety was through the roof. Mm-hmm. So I feel that I relate to that. Did you yeah. have, um, did you have anything else teenager. going on? Uh, well, depression. I was pretty depressed, especially when I was like around 14, 15, I was pretty depressed and pretty unhappy. And I mean, again, I felt like eating raw, I feel way more in alignment with who I am and just, that's the best way for me to describe it. And I didn't feel that way growing up. I didn't feel that way with how I used to eat. And I mean, I'm not saying it's all food. It's not, I think the environment where I was too, wasn't optimal for me. And I think that affected me a lot too. And I didn't know how to like get myself out of it. Yeah. That's, so. that's a really tough, tough part of it because a lot of us are 14, 15, 16, and we're, we're, we're still young. We don't know how to solve a lot of these problems and the adults mm-hmm. are not equipped. My mom Mm-mm. not equipped to deal no. with these types of things. You yeah. know, she still has it. She still goes through it. And, uh, you know, she knows that like the food and stuff will help, but it's very difficult when you have these habits in place for 20, 30, 50 years, mm-hmm. so hard to break through them. It and is. that's the thing, uh, you know, so many people make fun of like doc, you know, Oh, you use Dr. Google or you, you learned about health from a YouTube video. Where were we supposed to learn about it? it first of all, <laughs> right? there's plenty of amazing info on every, all the info is online. So mm-hmm. for all the people, you know, belittling, uh, go fuck yourself, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it, because no, it's just it. ridiculous. Yeah. I've learned so much on YouTube and got so many book recommendations well, that you, I've ordered you, that have changed my life. I love, we're so this day and age we live in, we're so lucky, right? We can learn so much. Well, it's a joke because you know, you have Harvard professors and scientists and Yale and Brown, and they're, they're all on line. They're all online. Mm-hmm. You can learn from them for free. Mm-hmm. And, you know, because our parents and because, you know, not all doctors know, have all the answers we have to turn somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, if we learned it out of a book, you know, people would would be more open to it or something. But it's like, well, the book was just online. I just read the book online. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so how so yeah. graduating so, high school, were you still yeah. going through all these things? So, yeah, pretty much. You know what? I was you know what? too? like I didn't feel very attractive. I wasn't healthy growing up. And I mean, as a teenager, I didn't feel pretty or anything like that. Um, I started to feel a bit better, like graduating high school, went to university and that's when I started drinking a lot though. So I started okay. drinking, like getting drunk a couple times a week, did, I guess. Did you drink weekend. in high school or no? Yeah, I did on the weekends. I started to okay. near the end of high school. So then I thought, oh, this makes me feel a little bit better. Cause I lose the anxiety, right? Like go to yeah. parties, you feel a bit better. So I'm like, oh, so then in, then in university, I was drinking on the weekends too. And then I got married. And then after university, I got married, we moved away, we moved back. And I was then like, we kind of got in the habit of drinking together too. Like every night, like having a bottle of wine or a couple of beers every night, barbecue, pizza, that sort of thing. I didn't consider myself unhealthy though. Like I was working out, like I thought I was healthy because I would still drink smoothies, eat salads. I was working out. Okay. And then my diet, like in adulthood after that was like salmon, chicken, the odd steak barbecue salads smoothies soy smoothies i was having a lot of soy smoothies and i was I've having never, problems i've never heard of a soy smoothie i guess like yeah. a soy milk no i remember oprah recommended this i was like i would watch oprah and dr oz right and oprah recommended this chocolate soy smoothie so i started drinking that every day and it was actually making me bleed like the the hormones from the soy i don't know if it's maybe from people say it's maybe from the spray if, if it's non-organic soy like maybe the okay. glyphosate i don't know if if soy has glycified or not, but I think I heard that, but I mean, but yeah, that was causing me problems. They, one doctor said they actually thought it was hormonal problems from the soy. So I removed the soy and then the bleeding stopped. Um, but yeah, my diet, I mean, again, I didn't think I was unhealthy in my twenties and early thirties. Cause I was working out and I'd still have smoothies and salads. Right. And I thought like, Oh, I'm having salmon chicken. This is healthy, but I didn't feel great. And then well, after I, well, I just want to interrupt you there. 
<clears throat> it sounds as though you had a pretty pretty good um, upbringing, at least that you were having like stuff out of the garden. It mm-hmm. sounded like you were having some home cooked meals type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, even like you said, as an adult, you were still doing salads and smoothies and all these things. Whereas, you know, a lot of people don't ever touch a vegetable. Yeah, you're so right. I think that the fact that you saw results right away and you saw, you know, we're going to get more into the raw foods and stuff, but you, you kind of had a good, you know, a somewhat good foundation, I think. You know, maybe maybe yeah. there's a couple of things you needed to really uh, hack and take out and add in. But mm-hmm. it sounds as though like your microbiome and your antioxidant levels and hydration, you did have a good you did have a good foundation there. Is that fair? Yeah, that's fair to say for sure. Yeah. You know what? One other thing I want to say, too, when I was a kid, I guess it was the fluoride and the water. You know what? Fluoride really does affect you. I don't know how it's affected me internally, but it affected my teeth when I was growing up, too, from having like too much fluoride. I don't know if it was from eating like the toothpaste or what it was, maybe from the water where I was. But I had a lot of fluorosis on my teeth, too, from the fluoride when I was growing up. Yeah. Did you have fluoride treatments? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't give my kids fluoride at all now. And I don't, we don't have it in our water or anything. And I don't, I buy the fluoride free toothpaste and have you seen I'd have dental where it always made me so insecure in my teeth. Cause I had like marks from the fluoride and you know, I, it was not pleasant. what kind of marks like, uh, like, uh, like the fluorosis marks. You've never seen them. I think they were like, I think they were like white like or yellow marks. Yellow, it was pretty bad. Okay. Yeah. So now at least now I know though, right. At least you learn everything you learn from. And now my kids, they don't have that. Thank God. Yeah. That's yeah. Great. Have you so. seen the movie Dark Waters? No. Okay. Um, what is his name? The guy that plays the Hulk. Uh, the actor, I cannot remember his name, but he he stars in it. And uh, I'm going to look it up as we're talking. Um, Comment down below if you know. <laughs> <laughs> so Mark Ruffalo, I didn't even look it up. Okay. Um, Mark Ruffalo is this, the actor in it. And it goes into how the water's been contaminate it because of Dow chemical and you know the chemicals they were leaching into the water system these water-based um it's similar to glyphosate it's in the same kind of like family but there's so much fluoride in the water at these times and you see that the areas near where the plants are these kids were having like completely black teeth because wow. of the oversaturation of fluoride because you have a little bit it can strengthen the outside of the teeth but yeah. you overdo it, it destroys the teeth and yeah i didn't catch it the first time watching the movie the little girl yeah. smiles as he's driving by and it wasn't like you know it, it didn't make it obvious yet and clear what was going on yeah so i thought she had braces on like these like dark blue or dark black you know these black colored braces but it was her just teeth and it really mm-hmm. hit me hard i was very infuriated and upset by that movie because they don't give a shit every single person in the Mm -hmm. world if their blood is tested has this chemical in it including Mm -hmm. you and i it's Mm -hmm. on top of mount everest it's it's everywhere and they don't give a shit yeah and there's like 20 at least 20 of these chemical companies that have done this and it's everywhere and Mm -hmm. they're like well you know what does it do if you ingest it it's like well, it's like ingesting a tire, but it's it's in like your bloodstream and DNA. Like you, you, you really can't remove it. Maybe you can on some kind of special protocol, but, you know, no everyday person is going to be able to remove that. And it's in your brain. It's in your eyes. It's just <sighs> crazy. It's, it's amazing. Amazing. Mm-hmm. But so so with that, what age were you when was that like growing up or what age were you? With the dental Dealing with stuff? the teeth issues, yeah. Yeah, that was growing up. I remember being in middle school. Like, I remember being in middle school, one of my friends being like, oh, your teeth. What? And it just, like, mm. obviously hurt my feelings. Right. I'd go in the bathroom and cry. And it was just like, no one should have to go through that. You know, every kid deserves to have nice, clean teeth, nice, clean looking teeth. And so that wasn't fun to deal with. But I mean, yeah, I, I don't think fluoride is a good thing. I've done a lot of research on it. I don't think it's a good thing. So like I said, my kids don't have any fluoride. Even when, even when they go to the dentist, they say, I don't want to do the fluoride treatments, even though I'm sure just a little bit there wouldn't have done that. It was probably more so in my water and stuff like that, or eating the toothpaste. I don't know if I was mm-hmm. eating spoonfuls of sugar, I might've been going around eating tubes of toothpaste. I don't know, but um, <laughs> yeah. So toothpaste I don't and know. sugar sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, but I think that's common. I think a lot of people, yeah, fluorosis on the teeth is a common thing, you know? I think teeth problems are just 
in gen- like teeth and sleep problems. Everyone's yeah. got them yeah. to some degree. Yeah, because absolutely. It, because there's so many opportunities to destroy them. Yeah. And they're so important. And you know what? I used to grind my teeth a lot when I was younger. Like I have some damage from grinding them. I would grind them a lot. And so, since I switched my diet, I don't grind them anymore. I would feel too like I'd have headaches in the morning from like grinding them sometimes. Yeah, I actually had never had a grinding problem. I've never Good. experienced anything like that. But Good. so so you're married at this point. Have you had any kids yeah. yet? I got married young. So I got married right after university. We met um, like 24 or something. Yeah. No, I was 22. Actually, I was so young, right? I was 22. (laughs) He was 24. So we got married right after university. He didn't go to the same school as me, but we lived like in that town together. And yeah, then, like I said, we kind of got in the habit of, you know, pick up a hot and ready pizza every day, not every day, but pizza, beer, wine. I mean, then on the weekends, drink a lot with our friends and it was kind of a bad road to be down. Like my twenties, I probably would have, they would have gone a lot different if I ate cleaner, if I realized how much what I was putting in my body affected my outer world. Right. Yeah. These, these, all these habits complement each other, whether for better or worse. So like, if you're mm-hmm. having pizza, it's like, well, let's drink or let's stay up late. Mm-hmm. Let's watch a movie. Let's mm-hmm. X, Y, Z. And mm-hmm. that's what makes healthy living hard environment mm-hmm. and habits like that are what make it so challenging. You know, if yeah. you, if you're all your friends go to bed at 9 PM, <laughs> becomes really easy and you don't have internet access it's like you you're gonna want to go to bed or they all wake up at 5 a.m or they're all going out for you know pizzas or salads or whatever whatever it is you know it takes a really strong type of strong is the wrong word because i think people that fail are still strong but i think that it takes a rare type of individual to just be the complete loner or be social but just not have to interact with all those things because You know, Mm -hmm. you want to feel part of the tribe. You want to feel, you know, you want to feel as though you're not missing out on the experience that's going Mm -hmm. on with everybody else because everyone else is having so much fun. Mm -hmm. That's what I struggle with as a raw vegan sometimes here in Toronto. Like I don't have any raw vegan friends. And um, sometimes I struggle with that, you know, because I used to go out all the time, get dressed up, go out, eat pizza, wine, this and that. So sometimes I miss like the connection with people like that, like connecting over food like that. You know what I mean? But then I think, you know what, you don't see the downside too. It's like the next day you feel like crap and it's just, it's a better right, life well, like this. Well, if you, if you've suffered with health and you get your health back, it's, it's worth everything. It's worth missing out on a pizza fucking night. I mean, I don't, you know, yeah. I, I don't miss it in terms of if I compare them, it's night and day and I don't give a shit. You know, I would rather feel really good every single day than have quote unquote, the most fun or the most laughter I actually have a, I have this argument with my cousin all the time. Cause, uh, you know, we, we cut up a lot and we make jokes and, you know, all kinds of things, uh, tear into each other. And sometimes it really gets to me and I'm like, dude, stop pissing me off. Like it's, it's getting it's too much. And he's like, you know, well, laughter is one of the best things ever. Like we want to have these good memories. And I'm like, well, I would rather feel calm and chill than just be laughing all the time. Cause yeah, laughing is awesome. But if I'm getting pissed off all the time and I'm full of like anger and anxiety. No, I'll take, I'll take the calmness because like you, my whole life has been anxiety. My whole life has been that. And it's like the trade-off. I would rather have that peace Mm -hmm. feeling that calm. I don't need a, I don't need a big screen TV. I don't need the best bed in the world. It's like Mm -hmm. taking a breath when I'm taking a breath feels good and closing your eyes and feeling relaxed actually works. It's like you've hit the fucking lottery. Yeah. <laughs> For the AJ. first time in your life. Sorry. About it's that. true. Person, no, but... no, no. It's true though. I agree with you. And yeah. I, so you're married, mm-hmm. you're, you're going out, you're feeling social and you, you feel pretty good. You're exercising or, mm-hmm. uh, you, I know, was you working think out that every you're day. pretty healthy. I was going to the gym every day. Yeah. I think I'm healthy. You know what? And, and where does the, this... where does, Sorry to cut you up, but where does the, you know, do you start going downhill or is it more just, you know like- what though? Like I would start to wake up with my gut, just feeling gross after when we were starting to drink, like we lived in the, at, like, you know, when I was around 28, 27, we were living in a condo in Toronto and we'd go to the barbecue area every night and have a bottle of wine and have our barbecued steak or burgers or salmon, whatever it was. And then and then go back to our condo. And then, then I'd make another plate of food, cheese, crackers, veggies, chocolate. 
maybe order a pizza too. Like that was, <laughs> that was the routine. And I would start to wake up feeling like crap, like my gut, just my gut, my, like, you know, when you wake up, my gut just felt gross. Like I just felt gross, but then, like I'd have a, it? then I'd have a coffee. Well, I was pretty slim. I was always pretty slim. Okay. I was actually slimmer back then. If you see, but you me, weren't I was having like, like bloating or anything. I guess I'd get a bit of bloating, but no, nothing Not that I bad. would. I had bloating yeah, well, for a I would, year. So I was, was starting like... to get bloating actually. That's yeah, I was. But yeah, I'd wake up just feeling like, oh, this is, I, but, but then I'd have, a, then I'd make a big coffee and I'd be like, okay, I'm good to go. Like, here we go. Let's right. do this. Right. And then I crash from the coffee in the afternoon, get anxiety. And yeah. So then I had my first daughter at about 30 years old. So after she was born, I started to run into a lot of health problems. I think at this point, my body was just like enough. This has been like right. 30 years now now you have, now you're breastfeeding a baby and taking care of a baby and getting no sleep. So your body, my body just couldn't handle also trying to take care of those other issues because before she was born, I worked from home and I was able to sleep off the night before. Right. Like I set my own hours. I could sleep in if I wanted to. So the sleep kind of helped me get through, I think how I was right. treating my body. So yeah, then I had my daughter. I ran into a lot of health problems. Then my anxiety just went crazy. I started having panic attacks. I don't know if you've ever had a panic attack, but I've had many panic attacks. They were just the, one of the worst experiences ever. I literally felt like I was going to die at one, one point, the, at one point I remember my husband, I called the ambulance because I was, I was thought I was dying. The panic attack was so bad. And my brain felt you, like it was swelling. And I thought I was, were dying. you hyperventilating? Um, I remember I couldn't talk, like I couldn't talk at all. They were trying to talk to me and I could talk at first and I, and I called my mom and I'm like, I'm dying. Like my anxiety was just so high. So I was oh having God. panic attacks at this point. My friend was in nutrition and I was asking her for tips and she was like, you need to do the candida diet, do this. So I started messing around with different diets. And I think with the panic attacks too, I was just drinking so much water and I was also still drinking coffee. I think I was like flushing all my minerals out. Cause I thought, yeah. you know what they say, drink as much water as you can. I was drinking like huge, like so much water. And I think I was just flushing everything out. It was throwing my electrolytes off. I was just trying all these diets. I was a mess and I was really fatigued. Like even to walk up the stairs, I would get tired and I had all these health problems. I would go to the doctor. They'd say, well, you're a new mom. It's normal. Right. Like it's, and I was, I would say, right. no, like something's wrong. Right. And my skin was really bad. Like even on my upper thighs, my legs would were, were inflamed and would break mm. out really bad on like my upper thighs on my legs and my back. And I just like nightmares and just like really fatigued, angry, anxiety. I was dealt with bloating too. And then the major digestive issues started, started happening then. So I had blood in my stool. I had like diarrhea, constipation. Mm. My digestion was a mess. So and it was I started like going when she was about one or two, when she was about two, I guess I started going to doctors being like, what is going on? Right. Nobody could figure out what's going on. Like the digestive issues were a big, big issue. So one doctor finally, after like 18 doctor's appointments, I remember literally it was like 18 doctor's appointments. This one doctor was like, maybe you have celiac. So I was like, what's that? Right. Then I went home and researched it. And so I removed gluten. Celiac is like basic, basically have a really bad, an autoimmune problem with gluten, with uh, gluten products. So I removed gluten from my body, from my diet right away. And literally within 24 hours, I, like literally it felt like all my anxiety went away, all the brain fog. I felt like so good. I was like, holy crap, this is crazy. How can this be affecting me like this? So wow. that's when my true health journey started, like right then and there. And then, then after I removed gluten, if I did eat it, which I did on occasion by accident, a couple of times I ate it by accident, I would get like so sick. I would be in bed for five wow. days, throwing up, coming out of both ends of me. Like it felt like the worst hangover with the worst flu combined. Like it was terrible. I felt like crap. I would react to it. Like even if it was, That's even, intense. Yeah. even if I would drink wine and the wine with the barrel used gluten or something, like even if the cork or whatever had it, I would react. I was so sensitive to it. So then I remove dairy because I was like, okay, I started researching if gluten does this to me, what are other things doing to me? Cause you just don't think growing up, right. And nobody says yeah. anything like, um, so my skin cleared up after removing gluten and dairy and I felt really good, but I didn't feel like I just knew I could feel better. I knew there was more, right. Sure. Like you weren't suffering, but you were eager to just go to the, get the full effect. Like you wanted to feel really good again. Yeah. And I was still having like digestive issues and I was still having like some problems. So I just knew I could have feel better. Have you heard that uh, people with 
like a really intense gluten allergy or a celiac can experience like schizophrenia? Yeah, I have. I actually did a video on that. That was one of the first videos on my channel that I did because I find that so interesting. And way back when, when there was, there was a period in time, I forget what decade and when it was, but they removed gluten from like the culture in that period of time. And then the schizophrenia rates went down to like zero. Right. And then they reintroduced it and the schizophrenia rates came back. It's so interesting. And you know what? I'm starting to really think it's not necessarily the gluten that it's the roundup and the glyphosate that it's sprayed with. I really have right. seen so many studies. And when they study, when they've studied fish or different lab rats or things like that with, uh, with glyphosate, they react the same as people who it does the same things to them, like shockingly exactly the same as people who have celiac or react to gluten. Well, just for the people listening, uh, John McDougall, who is a plant-based vegan doctor, one of the, one of my favorite physicians, he actually is the one that kind of showed me the information on how people with celiac can experience the schizophrenia. And you can actually in the early stages, pull it away and relieve a lot of those symptoms. But um, also for the people who don't know what glyphosate is, glyphosate is what the antibacterial chemical in Roundup spray, and it's sprayed all over the U.S. in crazy amounts. And it's water soluble, just like the, the chemical I was talking about in dark waters. So it's everywhere on Mount Everest. It's in pretty much everything, unless it's controlled to not have it in the, the areas like clean and safe because it's in the water, it's in the air. And because we talked about this earlier as well, we actually have tools to protect us from things like this. If you guys aren't aware, I would highly recommend you check out Zach Bush, Dr. Zach Bush, who is like one of the leading authorities on glyphosate. And I'm actually gonna grab one second. So Jillian, this was stuff I was telling about you about uh, mm-hmm. yesterday. Okay. This was made by him and what it does is it strengthens the tight junctions of the intestines. So when you have that uh, glyphosate and that gluten and things coming in and damaging the uh, intestines over and over, they start to spread. And then you have food particles and things getting into the bloodstream, triggering autoimmune issues and autoimmune responses because it's not supposed to be there. It's just a mineral. um, But what it does is it re-strengthens those tight junctions so that you're actually getting your food, absorbing your food, you're preventing the inflammation damage of the cells. I can send you some of the studies on that as well. But my personal own testimony was I was when I was at my lowest weight and I was just really messed up. Dan McDonald recommended I had a consult with him. He recommended a couple of things that put me on the right path to building my health back up. But one of the things was he was like, your gut is really messed up, dude. You need to go get a bottle. It was restore at the time. Same, same product, just different label. And with, I had brain fog for an entire two years and I was in severe fight or flight and I was very underweight. And when I started using this after, I think a week or two, my brain fog was completely gone and it was so bad. It was like, I'm kind of scared to drive. I shouldn't drive. So, wow. you know, just cause you have experienced those things and the damages of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, if there is, you know, you feel really good. That's, that's awesome. Um, you might not need it at all, but if, there is any weaknesses in, in, uh, going on with your tight junctions, you might even go to the next level type of thing. So I highly recommend either like looking into or checking it out. And for people with, you know, also what it does is if you accidentally are exposed to gluten, but you take this on a semi-regular basis, it will minimize the impact. Mm -hmm. And you know what, when I first had, when I first discovered that those were issues inside of me, um, people used to say a couple people actually said to me, not doctors, just like random friends or someone, people on Instagram, I think like would message me and say like, this is a gut problem, but I just kind of blew it off and ignored it. And I didn't think it was, I just thought, Oh, if you have this, this is an allergy. This is what you're dealing with. It's never going to go away, but no, it wasn't my destiny. It actually did go away from eating a raw vegan diet, which is super interesting. So I do believe hundred percent, at least in my case, and probably many other cases, it is a gut issue because like I said, if I ate it, I would get severely sick after it was removed from my diet. Right. So it was causing me a lot of problems, brain fog, all kinds of issues. Who knows? Like to the point it was causing so many problems to the point who knows, maybe I would have become schizophrenic if I kept consuming it up to this point, right. For these last seven or eight years since I quit it. Um, but anyway, so anyway, yeah, after being raw vegan for a couple of years, cause like I said, if I ingested it, I would get very sick. And that happened on a number of occasions because it's sometimes 
it, it just happens by accident. You think something doesn't have gluten and it does and whatever. Right. So after a couple of years of being fully raw vegan, having a fully like plant-based diet, fruits, vegetables, nuts, and seeds, um, and some legumes I was still having, it was, how, uh, how did, how did you find it? Was it Christina? How did you find out about raw vegan? No, it, one night I was reading, I was super into studying health, like ever since I discovered how gluten was affecting me. So I was reading, it was actually something by Dr. Sebi. I was reading about the enzymes okay. and the life force in living foods. And then that led me to something else. Somebody saying about raw foods. And I thought, I can't believe I've never heard about this before. Right. So this was when my mm. daughter was in junior kindergarten. So this was six, this was five years ago. So I was like, huh, I'll try this. And then literally, like, literally, I never felt so good in my whole life. By the end of the first day doing it, I remember sitting, having dinner with my husband. He was like, who is this person? You seem like so like alive and happy. And like it right away, I was like, I can't believe I discovered this. Like I, this is how everybody should feel. Like, I can't believe this. This is better than any high I've ever had any drunk, being drunk, anything. I was like, this is just beyond. And I started to feel like my true self, right? I felt so good. So I was like, I was lucky because I didn't have to come off. I had already got off coffee before that. So had I been drinking coffee and transitioned raw, I mean, it would have taken a few weeks, maybe a month to feel good because detoxing coffee, I think it takes three weeks to get out of you. And it's for me, it's a lot of come down, depressing yeah. symptoms, getting off coffee. Right. So I wasn't coming off of that luckily or alcohol. I'd already weaned myself off of alcohol at that point, but even, yeah, I was still thinking I was eating a pretty clean diet and then transitioning to raw. It was just like next level. And I was hooked right away. And then, yeah, after a couple my, a couple years of eating raw, I was in Miami visiting someone and I accidentally, I was having a, I decided to have a cheat day and have a couple things that were cooked with her at this vegan restaurant. Mm -hmm. And I ate, I didn't even realize it was gluten. I ate like a bunch of gluten and I didn't get sick. And then I realized after wow. that it, when I went back, like another time she was like, there's gluten in that. And I was like, Oh really? And then I ate again and zero reaction, like zero reaction. And then I did it a few more times. I was like crazy. Not like I, I, I mean, it's not part of my diet anyway, but right. just goes to show, like, I think it's definitely a gut, a gut issue after my experience. And I've strength, your gut microbiome. I've just been reading so much about it lately. It's just the key to your health. It is so important. And just the best way to feed your gut microbiome and your immune system and have that strength and to be able to prevent those things and just thrive is to eat like as much plant-based foods as you can, as many plant variety, diversity of plant foods that you can. And that's a real testimony to how much your body can improve. A lot of people mm -hmm. are having these reactions and it's because their system is so weak and so down. And then after years of you take, act, taking care of yourself and meeting your needs, it's, it's not a big, as big a deal anymore. Yeah. So I like want to show people like, it's not your destiny. If things happen, even like my eyesight, since being raw, it's gone down a couple points. It's getting better. And I'm 39 years old, right? You go to some eye doctors, like I switched eye doctors to somebody here in Toronto from my childhood doctor. And he's like, no, 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 your eyes, they always get worse with age. You'll get this, you'll get that. They never like, it's not your destiny, right? You can reverse these things. If you give your body what it wants and the proper things, like it will just work miracles. It wants to heal. It wants to thrive and be its best. hundred percent. Mm -hmm. uh, Jillian, I'm going to start closing up here, but I did, there's something I wanted to ask you. There's a lot of people because there's a lot of people out there who are finding this information that aren't, you know, 15 or 20 years old and they have kids and they have, you know, a business and they're busy and they, they can't screw around. They can't trade off and just take a 20 day water fast. You know, they don't have, they don't have the time and ability to do something like that. And they want to feel better. They want to have more energy. They want to be, do something that's practical. Do you, do you have any advice to maybe the, the women out there who have careers and lives and, and children mm -hmm. and how to implement some of these habits that you have? Because they want to feel better. They want to, yeah. they want to look really good and they want to have the, still have the energy and capacity to handle their lives. They can totally do it. I mean, I just want to say the more, the cleaner you eat, the more energy you will have. I've never had more energy in my entire life. I feel I have so much energy now. I never crash, never get tired. And I, like I said, I'm 39. I feel better than I felt at 19. So I would just say, I mean, going raw to me, is just the optimal. I absolutely thrive on it. But if that feels too much for you, I would just say like incorporating more raw living foods wherever you can. And I lead a super busy life too. I feel like if I can do it, anybody can do it. I work full time. Plus I work on my YouTube channel like every day. Also, I'm a single mom to two kids. I have such a busy life. 
and I prioritize food and it's really easy to me. It's actually more simple eating raw than it is cooked food. You yeah. can have an amazing meal in under five minutes. There's like beautiful zucchini pastas and all kinds of different amazing things you can make. And it never gets boring. Like I'm always switching it up right now. I'm on a cleanse, but after the cleanse, I'm just excited to make all these different dips, dressings, recipes, and all these things. And it's just an amazing world. And I just want to say, like, give it a shot. Maybe it'll work for you. Maybe it won't, but give it a shot. See if it will, because it could be a whole new life for you. To me, there's my, my life before I was raw. And then there's life after raw. And I'm just, I feel like my true self now, my higher self, I'm more creative and more connected to my purpose and what I truly want to be. And I mean that the foods have truly led me to that. The, the living raw foods have totally connected me with myself. I think that's an amazing place to stop. Jillian, I, I would love for you to talk a little bit more about your YouTube channel. Uh, Jillian mm -hmm. has a YouTube channel called uh, Jillian Berry. Mm -hmm. And she in it, she discusses all kinds of different topics. Some of them that we've discussed today and others um, getting started, raw foods, raw foods on a budget. Uh, really, actually, I have an interview. She interviewed me on there as well. So we could put that in, down below as uh, for those who are interested. But Jillian, if you want to talk a little bit about your YouTube channel, because I know how excited you are and how important it is to you. And it's always fun to watch. I'm always excited when you up so upload something new. Thanks, AJ. I love it. So I started the channel this year. Like AJ said, it's Jillian Berry, B-E-R-R-Y. That was my birth name. So I really feel like I'm just meant to be living this life. But I love my channel. I love to create a variety of content for the channel, show you guys what I'm eating in a day. And I love interviewing amazing people like AJ was on when he did 100 Days Raw. So his story was super interesting. You can find information about different cleanses. I'm actually on a great cleanse right now. I'm on day 23. It's pretty intense gonna be my last cleanse for a while because it's a pretty long cleanse but I'll be sharing that on there and just lots of great stuff I'm so passionate about health and wellness and it's awesome so definitely feel free to check it out yeah and um I will make sure to put the the links for that down below and I'll also put the links for your Instagram and stuff so that people yeah. can find you and interact maybe they'll have questions and be interested more in eating better and what's good guys is a lot, of, just like pizza and, and wine and stuff, those kind of habits all go together. When you start feeling better, it just becomes easier to make good habits. You want to walk, you want to take care of yourself. So don't think it's just this only an uproad, uphill battle. You know, these mm -hmm. things complement each other. The better you feel, the more excited you are to make change in a positive way. So Jillian, thank you so much for coming on. I know this went a little longer. I hope I'm not uh, interrupting no, your schedule too much. It's, but... You're not at all. It's been so great talking to you. I could talk to you for hours. I enjoyed talking to you. Yeah, it's so fun. And I also just want to invite you back at some point. Like we'll, we'll, we'll find something. We'll always find something to talk about. So yeah, definitely. Okay. So guys, Thanks, CJ. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jillian. Everyone stay hungry. Take care. <laughs>